Okay, so get ready, because we are diving deep today into some seriously heavy stuff. Oh, yeah. We're talking with Chapter 9 of The Future Ahead by Warding Lewis. And let me tell you, he does not hold back when it comes to exploring life loss and what it really means to thrive. He really just jumps right in, doesn't he? I mean, that opening line, when you are not free, you are already dead. That'll get your attention. Seriously. It hits you right in the gut, especially knowing everything he's been through. For sure. And to come out and say something so powerful right away, you just have to know more about how he got there. Exactly. It makes you want to understand the journey that led him to that realization. And that journey starts in South Sudan. During a really intense period of conflict, Louis' childhood was definitely not what you'd call typical. Definitely not. And to think about it, being separated from your family at such a young age, having to deal with violence as a normal part of life, it makes you question everything. It does. Yeah. And the way he talks about being an orphan, even before he really understood what the word meant, that always gets to me. Yeah, it really stuck with me, too. You can just feel feel the immense sense of loss he experienced at such a young age. And it makes you think about all the other things children in war zones lose along the way, their innocence, any sense of normalcy, the chance at a future they should have had. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. And through all of that, he's wrestling with these massive questions. Why were they killing us? What is the meaning of life? These aren't just philosophical questions for him. They come from a very raw and painful place. It's heavy stuff for sure, but it's also what makes his story so powerful. He doesn't shy away from the tough stuff. He leans right in. And that leads to what I consider a turning point in the chapter when he realizes that only you can help you. That's where you really see his resilience shine through. It's like he's taking back control in a world that's constantly trying to take it away. Recognizing that even in the middle of all the chaos and loss, he still has the power to choose his thoughts, his actions, his own path. Absolutely. And that focus on having a choice, on freedom of thought, it's so clearly tied to what he went through with the war and the oppressive regime. It's like he's saying, you can control where I am, but you can't control my mind. Exactly. And that's a powerful message that goes way beyond Luth's personal experience. Uh. It speaks to anyone who has ever felt stuck or powerless because... We always have a choice in how we respond to the world around us. Yeah. And this idea of taking control of personal agency, it really hits home when Lewis starts talking about how he defines success. He shares this incredibly moving story about his time in middle school. Yeah, that part really stayed with me too. He's doing incredibly well in his classes, excelling really, but you can tell there's this underlying sadness. Right, because he doesn't have anyone to share those accomplishments with. His parents, they were victims of the war. It's just heartbreaking. And it really makes you think about the difference between achieving something on paper and actually having those supportive elements to celebrate with. It makes you realize that success, at least the way Lewis sees it, isn't just about individual achievement. Exactly. It's about connecting with others, sharing those achievements with the people who matter most. And it makes the cost of war so much more than just the physical destruction. It's about all those stolen moments, the simple joys of sharing your life with someone you love. And he really drives that point home with a tough question. He asks us to imagine seeing the person who killed your family but not being able to do anything about it. It's a lot to process, but it forces you to confront the fragility of life and makes you appreciate the things we often take for granted, like simply having loved ones around. It really does put things in perspective. And then he shifts gears and starts asking you, the listener, some really direct questions. It's like he's prompting us to reflect on our own lives through the lens of his experiences. It's true. He asks about your personal definition of freedom, how societal pressures influence your choices, even your sense of responsibility towards others. He even encourages you to pause the deep dive and really sit with those questions for a moment, which I think is brilliant. I agree. It makes it so much more interactive than just passively reading a book. It turns it into a conversation. Exactly. And that active engagement is key to understanding Luth's perspective on success, how he sees it as a moving target. He talks about 1985, 1992, and 1996, three really pivotal years in his life. And at first, he viewed these years as periods of failure leaving home, missing the opportunity to go to that prestigious boarding school, and facing setbacks in his chosen field of study. Right. And it's easy to see why he might have felt that way back then. Absolutely. But then he does something really interesting. He looks back on those experiences later in life and completely reframes them. What he initially saw as failures, he later recognizes as opportunities for growth and finding a new direction. He talks about how leaving home, even though it was incredibly hard, ultimately opened up new possibilities, gave him a chance to define success on his own terms. It's such an important point to remember. Our definition of success isn't fixed. It changes and grows along with us. 
What might feel like a failure in one moment can end up being a stepping stone to something even better down the line. It's like those tough experiences forced him to reconsider what was truly important and ultimately put him on a path more aligned with his own values and aspirations. And that leads to another interesting question for all of us. How do we define success in a way that feels true to ourselves even when we hit roadblocks? That's what Lewis really wants us to think about. Moving beyond those traditional markers of success and figuring out what it truly means for each of us, individually. It's about recognizing that success isn't a finish line. It's an ongoing process of growth, adaptation, and self-discovery. And that brings us to what I think is the most powerful part of this whole chapter. When Lewis says he's thriving on my terms. It's such a short statement, but yeah. man, it's powerful. You can really hear the resilience in his voice, his dedication to creating a life of purpose and meaning and doing it his own way. It's not just about getting by. He's actively shaping his own story. Right. It's like he's taking back the power that was stripped away from him, not just by the war, but by all those societal expectations that try to dictate what success should look like. He's basically saying, I get to decide what success means for me. Exactly. And that message resonates with everyone, no matter who you are or where you come from. It means success isn't some predetermined finish line. It's about finding what truly matters to you and then living a life that reflects those values. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Lewis' world, what's the one thing we should take away from all of this? What's that one golden nugget? I think Lewis leaves us with a really thought-provoking question. And it's yeah. one I hope everyone listening will take some time to consider. If success isn't about reaching a fixed point, if it's more about how we understand our own experiences, then how does that change how we choose to live our lives? It's a challenge for sure. Letting go of those external measures of success and redefining it based on what truly matters to us as individuals. Absolutely. It's about learning to embrace the journey, every twist and turn, and finding those moments of joy in the process of becoming who we're meant to be. And realizing that setbacks are just part of life. They don't have to define us. Exactly. It's about our resilience, our ability to adapt and grow, and ultimately to define success on our own terms, just like Lewis. This deep dive has been incredible. Lewis's story really highlights the strength of the human spirit to not just survive, but to truly thrive, even when facing unbelievable adversity. Absolutely. He reminds us that we always have the power to choose how we respond, how we define success, and how we want to live our lives, even in the darkest of times. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. If you found this even a little bit thought-provoking, I highly recommend checking out the future ahead. And remember, success isn't a destination, it's a journey. And it's your journey, 